Hi folks, it's Richard from Inclusive Driving. As you can tell, it's, it's night time. Uh, we've been doing a bit of experimenting with fuel efficiency at different speeds. Uh, if you look in Driving the Essential Skills, it states that driving at 70 miles an hour uses about 30% more fuel than driving at 50 miles an hour. So we decided to go and do the same journey at various different target speeds. We did a journey at 50 miles an hour. We did a journey at 55, 60, 65 and 70. We also did the 70 mile an hour journey with and without our learner roof box on uh, to see what the effect of the additional air resistance would be. So the rules we followed when we were doing this were that we would always prioritise safety over speed. So we would set our cruise control to, for example, 50 miles per hour. If at any time we felt it was totally inappropriate and we were putting ourselves in danger or other road users in danger by travelling at 50 miles an hour, then we would adjust our speed. Uh, we'd then look at the end of the journey to see what the average speed was and we wanted to do that for various different speeds. Now we did a journey on the M54 which is in the West Midlands. It's a two lane motorway and we went from junction one to junction four. We turned around, we went all the way around the roundabout and then did the same journey from junction four back to junction one. So the theory was in doing that we would counteract any changes in wind direction by going in one direction and then in the other. We'd also counteract any gradient differences, any differences in how steep the hills were by going in one direction, perhaps predominantly uphill, and then in the other direction, predominantly downhill. We set cruise control to try and keep our speed to what our target was. And at the end of each leg, we recorded our car's readout of fuel consumption in miles per gallon. We recorded the average speed that we had achieved on that particular journey. Anytime we'd stopped at traffic lights, the car still calculates average speed. So the average speed will be much lower in all cases than the target speed that we set cruise control. So this was with a target speed of just 50 miles per hour. When we take into account the time spent at traffic lights at the roundabout at Junction 4, uh, going around the roundabout and then speeding up again as we came on the return journey, uh, our average speed was only about 29 miles per hour, would you believe it? Uh, at this speed, you'll notice we never overtook anybody. Everybody was overtaking us. Uh, we didn't feel intimidated by any other road users but it did feel very, very slow. Um, we had quite a few lorries that would tailgate us for a while while they were waiting for an opportunity to overtake us. Now, I don't feel that was tailgating aggressively. It was just down to poor planning on the lorry drivers sneaking up on us, realising, oh, hang on, this car's doing 50 miles an hour. I'm going to overtake and then having to wait for other traffic to overtake the lorry before the lorry could pull out. And you will notice sometimes when one lorry overtakes us, there is a stream of cars behind it. So I do feel that 50 miles per hour was perhaps inappropriate. It would have been more appropriate maybe on a three lane motorway where there are more opportunities to overtake. On a two lane motorway, I do feel that we were holding people up. Although our fuel efficiency, if you look at the figures, we're pleased with that. That was absolutely phenomenal. Then on the next journey, we had a target speed of 55 miles per hour. And our average speed for the whole journey turned out to be about 45 miles an hour. We didn't feel that this was too slow. It, it felt like we were making good progress. When lorries were overtaking us, we didn't feel that we were holding them up unnecessarily. They were able to approach, move lanes, get round us, move back in without having 
and as big a stream of traffic behind them as we found at 50 miles an hour. You'll notice that we only had to overtake one vehicle. There was a van towing a trailer. Um, and for that, we did increase our speed slightly so that we could make the overtake a little bit shorter. Uh, so we, we could do it in a shorter amount of time before moving back to lane one. Fuel usage for this worked out at uh, 76 miles per gallon, which is still pretty good. Very pleased with that. This next run was at a target speed of 60 miles per hour and the average speed turned out over the whole journey to be about 50 miles per hour. We really liked 60 miles an hour. It let us make what we felt was good progress. It wasn't stressful driving. A nice thing about 60 miles an hour is that as a rule, you won't get lorries overtaking you because lorries generally have speed limiters fitted to them. National speed limit for a lorry is 60 miles per hour, but uh, a legacy of European law requires lorries to have speed limiters fitted, which keeps them actually below 60 miles an hour. So 60 in a car means that you may occasionally have to overtake a lorry and you might be beneficial to increase your speed while you're doing an overtake so that you're not in lane two for longer than necessary move back to lane one and then bring your speed down again to 60 but generally on a quiet road like this was we didn't really need to overtake if at all um, fuel efficiency was 69.8 miles to the gallon so of course it is less than we were doing at 50 miles per hour but so far this seems to be quite a nice compromise between fuel efficiency and making progress. On this journey, which had a target speed of 65 miles per hour, our average speed over the return journey ended up as being 53 miles per hour. You'll notice we do a lot more overtaking. We are now moving at 65 miles an hour, so moving significantly faster than the lorries, which are limited to 60. When we were overtaking a long line of several lorries, we did increase our speed to 70, just so that we could move back to lane one sooner. Um, it didn't feel too rushed, but we were noticeably increasing our speed more often at 65 miles an hour than we needed to at 60 and remember increasing speed and then decreasing speed is worse for your fuel uh, consumption than maintaining a steady speed for the number of overtakes we did on this short journey maybe that's not a significant factor but our fuel consumption turned out to be 64.9 miles per gallon this journey was at 70 miles an hour target speed and our mean or our average speed turned out to be just 56 miles per hour. Um, you'll notice in this journey we could not maintain 70 miles an hour. We had a few instances where one lorry was overtaking another. So one lorry doing maybe 59 miles an hour was being overtaken by a lorry doing 59 and a half miles an hour. And of course, we have to stay behind that. Both lanes are blocked. So we're reducing our speed down to just below 60 miles an hour and then speeding up again once the lorry is out of the way and we can continue the overtake. Overtaking itself, when we were overtaking lorries, we felt it just required a lot more concentration and brain power to plan when to overtake, bearing in mind that a lot of traffic on motorways will be exceeding the 70 mile an hour speed limit. Judging when it was appropriate to move from lane one to lane two without it being too early, but without us getting so close to the lorry that we ended up slowing down, it was just overall a more stressful journey. Fuel consumption turned out to be 62.9 miles per gallon. And on this final journey, we again had a target speed of 70 miles per hour. The average speed turned out to be 57 miles per hour. So that's very comparable to 56 miles per hour from the previous 70 mile an hour journey. The difference on this journey was that we had our driving school learner sign on the top, which acts as a really big windbreak. 
Um, we were curious to know how much of a difference it would make having a roof box on. Um, we knew it would make a difference, but the difference was instead of getting 62.9 miles to the gallon, on the same journey, we got 52.3 miles to the gallon. That we feel is a very significant difference. So we've displayed the fuel consumption at the end of each leg in the graph. Now we're going to show you the overall graph and what we've included on here in the, the line graph is showing fuel consumption in miles per gallon. Miles per gallon is a reading which means the greater the number, the higher the number, the better it is. And the lower the number, the worse it is. Underneath that, the bar chart is showing how often the car was able to use electric mode instead of petrol mode. So being a hybrid car, at lower speeds, you can see that we were in electric mode for about 33% of the time as we got to higher speeds and that higher speed with the roof box on, we were in electric mode for only about 16% of the time. You can also see that, of course, the faster you go, the more fuel inefficient it is, the more fuel you use. And if you plug the numbers into a calculator, we found that our fuel consumption at 70 miles an hour was very close to driving the essential skills claim of it being about 30% greater than it would be at 50 miles an hour. So we agree with driving the essential skills there. We found that having the learner roof sign on made a huge difference. It would be interesting to do this again at 50 miles an hour with and without a roof box to see if the effect is as significant as, he, as it is at 70. I suspect the difference with and without the roof box at 50 will not be quite as significant as it was at 70. But of course, extra air resistance is always going to increase your fuel consumption. We found that driving at about a target speed of 60 miles an hour gave us a nice compromise between fuel efficiency and a very relaxing, non-stressful journey. We found that 70 miles an hour target speed overtaking manoeuvres could be difficult. Um, and if you're getting tired, that would be even more difficult. 50 miles an hour we did feel was too slow um, we didn't feel we were making progress we found we were perhaps maybe inconveniencing other road users 60 55 that seemed to be what we would call our golden area generally at 60 miles an hour we are going faster than the lorries and i think that is quite a significant factor in how our fuel efficient journey played out so that's all for now and we'll see you on another video very soon.